Here we have a U-tube manometer that's connected to a closed tank. The air pressure in the tank is given as 0.5 psi, and the liquid in the tank is oil. And you can see down here that we're given the gamma for oil, so it's 54 pounds per cubic feet. Um, the pressure at point A, point A is right here, this little red point A, that is given as 2.0 psi. We want to find two things. We want to find the depth of the oil, so that's going to be this term Z right here. And then we have to find the reading H on the manometer, and that'll be right here. Let's draw this line so it's easier to see where that is. Okay, so first thing you should notice about this problem, it's a manometer problem. When we have a manometer problem, we always go to our favorite hydrostatic equation. I've written that equation right here. So we've got P2 minus P1 equals negative gamma times H2 minus H1. So basically this just gives us a relationship between the pressures and altitude, or depth, basically. All right, so remember H, that is going to be altitude for your two points. And now let's see what we were given. Um, we were given two pressures. We were given the air pressure in the tank. So that's going to be this pressure right here. Notice that I have labeled a point one. We're going to say point one is right here at the top of the oil. Okay. And then we're also given the pressure at point A. So the pressure right here at this point is going to be 2.0 psi. So I've labeled those right here so we can use them later. Now let's go ahead and use our hydrostatic equation between the two points. Let's find Z first. So we're going to use the hydrostatic equation between these two points right here. So this point 1 I've labeled and then this point A. So if we write that out, we're going to have P sub A minus the pressure at point 1, which is the air pressure. And then that's going to be equal to negative gamma and the gamma we have is going to be for the oil, since that's the fluid we're looking for. So we'll have negative gamma of the oil, and then we need our altitudes. Now let's pick a reference point that we're going to use, and I'm going to use the same reference point this whole problem. Now there are easier ways to do it, but we're going to go ahead and do this way, just so you can see how to use the reference point to find all the different altitudes. Okay, so this reference point I'm going to use lines up with point one. Now we're going to measure our altitude from that. So we need H for point A. So we need to measure from this reference line down to point A. Remember below the reference line is negative. So we're going to have negative Z. And then we're going to subtract off the elevation for point 1. Now point 1 lies on the reference line, so that should be 0. Okay, so we've got negative z minus zero for our altitude difference. Now let's see what else we can plug in here. Um, we have PA, that was two, so we're going to have two. Pressure of the air, we were given that. So we'll have two minus 0 0.5. Now, before we can go on, we need to notice something about this. If we look at our units, we have pounds per square inch. If we look at gamma, we have feet, so we need to convert something. So let's go ahead and convert these pressures. So to convert these to feet, we're going to have 144 inches squared per feet squared. So let's use this multiplier to convert over. And now that's going to equal negative gamma. Gamma was 54, and then we have negative Z. Okay. So now we have one equation, one unknown. Z is our unknown, so we can solve for Z. Z is going to be 4 feet. So that's going to be the depth of the oil in that tank, okay, given those pressures. So now that we have that, let's move on to part B, where we want to find H. To do that, we're still going to use the same reference line. Now, I realize there are easier ways to do it, but just to keep using that same reference line, that's what we're going to do. So part B. So for part B, we're going to have to go use the hydrostatic equation two times. We're going to go between point A and then this point 2 that I've labeled. So point 2 is right here where we switch over from oil to this other fluid. And then we're also going to have to go between this point 2 and this point 3. And notice that this is open to the atmosphere up here at point 3. 
All right, so let's look at our hydrostatic equation. We're going to have, whoops, it's not working here. We're going to have P2 minus PA. Okay, and that's going to be negative gamma. Our gamma is for oil again, so we're going to have negative 54. And now we need our elevations. Now remember, I'm measuring from this first reference line we put up here. Anything below that is going to be negative. So we need the elevation for point 2, where point 2 is at this point in the manometer. Okay, So that's going to be negative because it's below the reference line. And it'll basically be 4 plus 2. Okay, And then we are going to subtract the elevation for point A. So the elevation for point A, measured from this reference line, is going to be the negative 4. Okay. So now if we go through and plug in some other information, let's see what we get. P2 minus PA. We already know what PA is. That was 2. So we're going to have 2. We need to convert that over because, again, we want everything to be with feet. Okay, so convert that. And then that's going to equal negative 54. And then if you look up here, a bunch of this stuff's going to cancel. This 4 will cancel, and then this will cancel. So that gives us negative 2. Okay. So from this, we can solve for the pressure at that point, too, and we get 396 pounds per cubic foot. Okay. So now we've got this pressure right here. So that's 396. Now let's do the hydrostatic equation again between point 2 and our point 3. Write it out. So we got P3 minus P2 equals uh, negative gamma. And let's write out our elevations and then we'll fill off the rest. So our elevations, again, we're going to use that same reference line. Okay, So this reference line right up here where we had our point 1, the top of the oil. So doing that, we want to go to point 3 first. So our point 3, it's below the reference line, so it's going to be negative. So we're going to have negative, and then we'll have 6 minus h. Okay, And then we'll have a minus. And then we need our elevation at point 2. So we found that up here in the previous equation. So that'll just be minus a negative 4 point plus 2. Okay, So that gives us that. Now let's fill in the other details that we have. We're going to use gauge pressure here. So we're going to say P3 is 0. Because remember, gauge pressure does not look at the atmospheric pressure. So anytime we have gauge pressure, just say the atmospheric pressure goes to zero. Now P2, we just found that. So that's 396. So we're going to have negative 396. That's going to be negative gamma. We don't have gamma. We were given the specific gravity instead, the 3.05. So remember, specific gravity is going to be the gamma of whatever fluid you're dealing with over the gamma of the water. Okay. So we know the gamma of water that's given in all the tables. So we're going to have negative 3.05 times 62.4. And then look at our elevations here. If you notice, we're going to have a negative 6 plus a 6. So the 6 is canceled. And then we have a negative times negative h. So that gives us a positive h. This leaves us with one unknown, which is h. And we get 2.08. Okay, so now we found Z and we found H, and I know the way we did the elevations here might have been more difficult than need be. You could have changed your reference lines if you wanted. I just wanted to be consistent with the reference lines. Um, so you could have changed it and had your reference line at 2 and done it that way, or you could have had it up here. Either one, wouldn't matter, as long as you're consistent. Alright, so that's an example of a manometer.